Today I'm out in Carmel, California with a cutaway of the new Tundra Hybrid. What's really interesting about the Tundra is that it uses a hybrid system that is very different than any other Toyota hybrid that has come before because this uses a traditional 10-speed automatic. In fact, it's the exact same 10-speed automatic transmission right there that we find in the regular Tundra. The big difference is all the stuff going on here in orange, like this big battery pack in the rear. This is nearly two kilowatt hours. It is still a nickel metal hydride battery pack, which is interesting. A lot of folks have asked me, why does Toyota continue to use nickel metal hydride packs rather than quote unquote more modern lithium ion packs? Well, there are a number of reasons. Nickel metal hydride packs actually have better cold weather performance than lithium ion packs. And even though nickel metal hydride batteries are less energy dense than lithium ion, as you can see, it's not that big of a deal because this pack is actually pretty similar physically to the pack that we find in the F-150 hybrid that is a liquid cooled lithium ion pack. This one is air cooled. It actually sucks air from the cabin in through the battery pack, exhausts it out, keeps the battery cold. Now, this is less expensive than a lithium ion battery pack. It's a little bit easier to deal with in some respects. They tend to be a little bit less likely to catch on fire, so a little bit safer. And even though this is less energy dense than a lithium ion pack, it's actually just a little lighter than the system that we find in the F-150 because it doesn't have to be liquid cooled. The liquid, all the plumbing, all that, adds weight, adds complexity to the vehicle. You can see it's connected up here to the high voltage control systems. This is the inverter and charge assembly. This is what converts voltages, inverts DC to AC, and then of course rectifies AC back to DC again for battery charging. Really the most interesting thing and probably the biggest thing to know about this hybrid system is that this is exactly the same as a regular twin turbo Tundra, except for the addition of these orange components. And this is the main reason that the fuel economy in the Tundra Hybrid is not as high as some people might have wished for. Fuel economy improvements are on average 2 mpg combined better than the non-hybrid standalone turbo model. And the big difference is in city driving, not highway driving. And the reason for that is in front we still have a powerful twin turbo V6. And unlike other Toyota hybrids, this still runs on the regular auto cycle. A lot of folks don't realize, but a lot of the fuel economy improvements that we find in many hybrid vehicles, whether it's a Camry hybrid or a Prius or a RAV4 hybrid, it's not simply that they added an electric motor or two electric motors in the case of Toyota systems. It's all the other changes in the vehicle, aerodynamic improvements, rolling resistance improvements, and the conversion of the engine from an auto cycle to an Atkinson cycle that is more efficient. So why didn't Toyota just use a version of their other hybrid systems in the Tundra? Well, it's because they didn't want to give up torque. And that's what the Atkinson cycle generally does. It trades torque for improved efficiency. And when you're towing or you're hauling, if you want to be able to haul or tow 10,000 pounds in your next truck, you need a lot of torque. That's what we get out of the twin turbo engine. And that's what's added to it by the electric motor here in the middle. Now let's talk about the system operation here. Again, this is the regular 10-speed automatic transmission from the regular Tundra, including a torque converter, and that is key. When this vehicle is rolling down the road as an electric-only vehicle, the torque converter is locked, it's running through that and then through the transmission, then through the traditional four-wheel drive transfer case right there, this drive shaft that goes up to the front, drive shaft that goes back to the rear right there behind that transfer case. So this drivetrain is exactly the same as the regular model. It's just as off-road capable, just as winter weather capable, and logically just as perhaps you might say inefficient as the regular system. Horsepower total comes in at 437, torque at 583. But even when the battery is exhausted, this is still going to be very powerful because again, that twin turbo engine right there under the hood. Also because the hybrid componentry, the inverter, the extra cooling loop up front, the motor right there, the clutch pack that we have in there, and of course the battery pack in the rear, all this together adds between five and 600 pounds depending on the spec of the vehicle that you're looking at versus the comparable non-hybrid model. In practical applications, here's how the hybrid system works. When you're stopped at a stoplight, the engine turns off, and that's totally okay because the air conditioning is run by the battery in the rear. The inverter helps convert the electricity from the battery to be used for all the various vehicle systems, including the electric air conditioning compressor. When you take off from a stoplight, as long as you're taking off gently, power will first come from the battery through the inverter over here to the electric motor. It will drive the vehicle forward, whether you're in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive mode. Although I should say that Toyota does actually disable the engine start-stop system if you're in the four-wheel drive modes normally. 
As speeds ramp up or you demand more acceleration, the vehicle is then going to start the engine right in front. It's going to close the clutch pack between the transmission and the engine, and then power can flow mechanically. If it doesn't want to involve the electric motor in locomotion, it can actually completely remove it from the equation, which is different than Toyota's two-motor hybrid system, where the motors are always involved in locomotion. And that's why they went with this system in the Tundra. If you used a two-motor hybrid system in this and you were trying to tow 10,000 pounds, you could get some overheating issues. The motors might uh, overheat a little bit more prematurely than in this design. Whereas in this design, in those situations, the electric motor is simply adding boosts. If you're out on the highway and you want to pass someone, you need that extra moment of boost, then the electric motor kicks in, bumps you right up to the maximum horsepower. But if the battery is exhausted, you still have at least the horsepower and torque output of the twin turbo V6, which again is pretty high. As you start slowing down, obviously regen braking is going to be in action. Power is going to flow mechanically through the transfer case, through to the transmission, over here to the electric motor where it's going to generate power, stuff it right back there into the battery. But you will notice that for the size of the vehicle, regeneration ability is fairly modest. And that's because the battery pack is not terribly large. This is a 48 horsepower electric motor. So regen ability is a little bit limited compared to some other Toyota hybrids, especially given the weight and the size of the Tundra. And there you have it, that's how the hybrid system in the new Tundra Hybrid works. And in case you're wondering, yes, this is exactly the same theory of operation as the hybrid system that we find in the F-150 hybrid. If you haven't already done so, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. And of course, check out multiple videos that we have on the channel on this all new Toyota Tundra Hybrid. And of course, the upcoming Sequoia and other hybrids from Toyota very, very soon. I'll see all of you later.